Senator Bob Casey. Howard Schultz wants it both ways. He wants it like we're not a union busting company. All we're doing is inhibiting the workers from unionizing. We're not busting the union. We're just trying to keep it from ever existing in the first place. Here's um, Bob Casey. They were meetings to discuss Starbucks and the opportunity for our people. Thank, Thank you for the question. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Casey. Mr. Chairman, thanks very much, and thanks for calling the hearing, Mr. Schultz. Welcome, and I want to welcome the, the workers in this room who have had to do so much, um, extend, expend so much effort over many years to uh, have the right to organize and bargain collectively, so we stand with you in that effort. I think that's a, a right that every single worker in the United States of America should have, the right to, to bargain collectively, to organize for, for wages and benefits. And too often in our country, workers don't have that right. I represent a state where workers over generations marched and mobilized and literally bled and died for the right to organize. It wasn't conferred upon them by some CEO or some, some boss. It, they had to fight for it, and that resulted, of course, in the National Labor Relations Act, which is still in effect, still the law of the land, despite repeated corporate attempts to undermine it. So we have a lot to talk about, not just with regard to Starbucks, but for workers generally. I wanted to start, Mr. Schultz, with a, a discussion about one of the firms that Starbucks hired. I'm um, told that when during your tenure as CEO, you hired Littler Mendelssohn, one of the largest and mo most notorious union-busting firms in the country that reportedly charges upwards of $600 an hour for their services. It's been reported that in 2021, Starbucks shut down all stores in the Buffalo area, rented out the Hyatt Regency Hotel, flew you, Mr. Mr. Schultz, and Starbucks senior executives into town and forced workers to hear you give anti-union talking points. Hmm. While Starbucks refuses to say how much they've spent on anti-union efforts, it's clear the company is willing to spend a significant amount of money on union-busting tactics. And guess what? Uh, under current law, federal law, Internal Revenue Service law, Starbucks is able to write off those costs as a run-of-the-mill business Now, pa expense. pause it for one second. Just to be clear, we just interviewed uh, Michelle Eisen. She is an organizing member uh, from that very first um, uh, Starbucks in, in Buffalo. The first unionized and she told us about about this sort of like they brought in a what they called the swat team she saw a document swat team where they brought in enough managers so that they were constantly under the watchful eye of managers from outside of buffalo they took over that hyatt regency they spent uh millions upon millions probably on these uh, uh union busting lawyers they would the way that they pretended that they were not having um forced uh union busting meetings was they would say to a worker and anybody out there who works on an hourly basis understands this dynamic you're counting on 40 hours a week maybe it's 20 hours a week 30 hours a week 40 hours a week maybe you think you're also going to get some overtime maybe 50 hours a week whatever it is that's what you count on so that you know how much money you're going to get at the end of the week and you're going to be able to pay your bills. Well, they come in and they say, you know what? Uh, on Wednesday, we're shutting the store down early. So you, you may be used to working eight hours that day from one to nine p.m., let's say, but we're closing the, show, the store at two. So you're only going to get one hour that day. However... There is a voluntary meeting for seven hours or six hours or three hours in which we'll give you eight hour credit if you come to that meeting. So we'll actually pay you to go to that meeting. Now, what are you going to do? You're going to go to that meeting. This is the this is the power that Schultz denies the employer has. 
the blackmail. You want to eat. You want to pay for your kids' health care. You want to whatever it is. You want to pay your bills. We hold the strings. You have no guarantees. And that's what was going on with those meetings there. And now Casey is saying, um, raising the point that we as taxpayers subsidize not just the cost of doing business, where I guess there's an argument there that, you know, it's a tax, you, you don't get taxed on that revenue if you're, you're using it on business expenses. But what constitutes business expenses? I mean, it's one thing to say, like, hiring labor costs business expense. It's another thing to say, um, buying coffee machines is a business expense. Uh, renting, uh, you know, uh, uh, storefronts, buying storefronts, repairing storefronts, business expense, advertising, business expense. But Casey brings up the fact that, like, destruction of unions by a law firm whose job number one is to bust a union, that's a business expense? Why are taxpayers paying for that business expense? What's the value to society in busting that union at Starbucks? Starbucks is able to write off those costs as a run-of-the-mill business expense, meaning taxpayers. Taxpayers are subsidizing union busting in the United States of America including that of Starbucks. So Mr. Schultz, I'd ask you, as a private citizen, in your personal capacity, do you believe that corporations should have the right to get a tax break, a taxpayer provided subsidization, a tax break for union busting activities? Uh, Senator Casey, you've said a number of things I'd like to respond to, but- Well, just answer that question first. No, I will. I mean, Starbucks Coffee Company is following the tax laws and the law that Congress has I didn't ask up. you for about Starbucks. I asked you about your personal view. Yeah. Do you think that, that that provision should stay as the law or should be changed? My personal view is we should follow the law that Congress has set up. Do you support that? I support the law. You support, you support the provision that allows, allows a company to hire union-busting firms and, and conduct other activity that interferes with the rights of workers to organize. I understand it's the law, but you're saying you support it. You would not support a change. Is that correct? I support the law, and I also take offense with you categorizing me or Starbucks as a union buster when that is not true. Well, look, I, you, you go. Did you hear the laughter in the room? Because those are all people trying to unionize their workplace. Not, not me. And have gone through all of the union busting that Howard Schultz was, and he will not answer that question. He will not answer that question. I mean, the argument for giving a tax deduction to a business expense is that that, that pursuit of business, society wants to encourage it. They want to encourage it because maybe it creates employees. It expands the GDP. But we know what union busting does. Union busting drives down wages for workers. Union busting uh, keeps workers subservient to businesses. Society does not benefit as a whole because the shareholders get 25% more returns. Society as a whole is not benefiting because Howard Schultz has $3 billion instead of like $500 million. Now, society as a whole would benefit if 200,000 workers got raises, got better benefits, could rely on their hours, were treated better. Because society does better when more people do better. But there's just not a there's just not a single argument you could make that the that the our society is better off because Howard Schultz is a multi billionaire as opposed to just a multi hundred millionaire. 
And I'm being generous with that. I'm giving them a couple hundred million. Um, all right, what else we got here? Let's, uh, Al Dente, gee, Sam, why are executive salaries, executive salaries, business deductions, but employees wages are not deductible? Either both should be or neither. I think both are business expenses. I'm not, I'm not sure I follow that. Uh, Dr. Colt, in my research into 19th century American history, the best example for the American dream I came across was a guy from Germany who came to the U.S. with nothing and died very rich. How did he get there? Luck, but also a lot of grift, corruption, and backroom dealings. There is no American dream. There's only corruption. Honest work very, very rarely results in riches. The rest is myth-making. I think you have an argument. Uh, Majority Report wardrobe coordinator. I know there's a running joke about Emma plotting a coup, but Bradley's the one alone in the room with the king right now. Just saying.